lovely to see you all, and I've got a few familiar faces in the audience, which is always terrific. Hi, Jenny. Um, yes, so I'm, I'm Anna Battle. I am an artist with a business degree. So when I uh, was in my late teens, Dad said, you'll never make a living out of art, as many dads would have, I imagine. So I went off to university to get an accounting degree, ended up doing marketing as well. And uh, after stints in the army, I did a year in the army and, and lots of years in the army reserve, and uh, some marketing jobs as well, and then graphic design. I've ended up with my business, Shiny Happy Art, which I registered the name in 2001. So it's been going for quite a while now. And primarily now, I'm an artist. I have just set up a, a painting studio out at Botanica Flower Farm, or Rose Farm, at Kabbalah, which is a dream come true as a flower painter, to be honest. Uh, I also do a, a online art classes globally through my business, Shiny Happy Art, and that's been going for quite a few years now. And I'm also an arts worker because myself and Mary-Kate Thompson are the creative advisors to the Carnival of Flowers Parade. This is our second year doing that as well. So there's a bit of variety there, even in my own career with the arts, of what's available. But my sons, who are 21 and 24, have also got careers in the arts, both of them being musicians. Uh, they have a band, so look up Flamingo Blonde on Spotify. I can tell you, the first time you see your kids on Rage, it is awesome. It was three in the morning, but they were on Rage. And oh my goodness, I was proud. So they are, they're both doing, it's almost like you have to run a dual career unless you hit the big time early. So um, one of them's doing marketing at Channel 7 and the other one's studying graphic and architecture so it's it's really handy to have that dual sort of stream when it comes into the arts so with Lauren's instructions in terms of when you have kids in the arts or you've got people who are interested in it we don't want to put them off because what dad said all those years ago probably was true back then but he's actually he's um, my mum's an artist too and I think she's bringing in most of the money at the moment so um, look it, things can change and I'm running a business that certainly did not exist when I finished school admittedly 30 five years ago. Okay, so like Lauren said, admittedly, while the arts are sadly not a growth industry here in Toowoomba, it's a very important industry. Um, today I just want to look at quickly, very quickly, three ways of looking at the arts in our community, in your own organisation and the organisations you service, and then for you personally. So how many of you lived here when the first Coat Street Arts Festival happened? That was 2014. Can you believe it? 2014. Didn't that change the livability of our city? I really think that that was, they, all of those muralists coming to town laid the foundations for the cafe culture that we now have. And before COVID came, we had 66 local cafes. I know because I was doing a cafe painting uh, book at the time and then COVID came. But um, it really did help us make Toowoomba a great place to live. And those muralists alongside music festivals, dance events and writers festivals also help attract new residents to Toowoomba. Because although we may have jobs for them, there's a lot more to life than work. So what do the arts offer? Look, arts, arts <laughs> this is a slip of the tongue, isn't it? Arts-based engagement can promote cooperation, awareness of social issues, and a reduction of social isolation, all of which con contributes to a shared sense of community pride and identity. I really think that jobs in the arts align so well with the caring professions and with mental health being so top of mind at the moment, it's got to sort of have a place at the table. Research has shown that including an artist in a project, and from an artist's point of view, this is preferably at the beginning of the project, creates a sense of pride and community ownership. Ben Tupac, who's a local artist, presented for Creative Mornings a few years ago, and I'll always remember him asking the question, who is missing at the table when you're discussing these big community events and community projects? So please don't miss out on the artists and their skills. Locally, the Toowoomba Regional Council has a corporate plan which is running till 2024, and under that they do have a cultural and arts support grant program, which opens twice a year in February and July. My experience with council is that it's quite slow, the whole process. It's uh, from an artist who wants to get things done quickly, it's, it's difficult to keep the momentum up, especially with a creative project. So there's definitely improvements that can be made there with council, and I hope that they'll be happening soon. Of course, there are occasional council jobs for academic artists as they manage the art galleries here and at Gumbungi, the Rosalie Art Gallery. And of course, every job at the Empire Theatre is a creative based job. And undoubtedly, that's the jewel in our crown. Toowoomba, of course, also hopes that hosts the Languages and Cultural Festival, the Carnival of Flowers, and most re recently, the Curious Arts Festival. 
So all of these events give opportunities to a number of artists in our communities, although seasonal events like this certainly don't offer security for the professional artists in our community. So my advice to young artists, young 15 year old artists, and there's a bit of room on the board up there, is to follow your heart, but also build the skills you need to promote yourself as a brand. Like so many places, the arts community in Toowoomba is made up of many groups and individuals, from hobbyists to professionals. And if you do have an opportunity to work with artists, please advertise through as many channels as possible, because we don't all know each other. Uh, and please, please, please don't ask us to work for free. Uh, or for exposure. This is our job. Young people just starting out in the arts industry also need to know to value their precious talents. Creativity really is the currency of the future, and they have it. There are a small number of arts businesses in town, some of which will take work experience students. Tinker Art Studio now has two locations. There are various paint and sip art studios, and of course there's Mari's Art and Framing, and volunteer organisations including the Arts Society and the Toowoomba, or Arts Council Toowoomba. We have some fabulous dance studios, vibrant performing arts culture, and the Lighthouse is the new home for Toowoomba writers. You may have seen it on the corner of Hume and Margaret Streets, there where Colliers used to be. It's right near Emerge, where some of you have your coffee vouchers for. But I'd also like to open the conversation with you about the benefits of personal involvement in the arts, and this works for you and your teams and your family. So what, they, what it offers you is communication, planning and organisational skills, the increased capacity to collect, organise and analyse information, and of course, increased problem solving abilities. I'm pretty sure this skill has been mentioned by an earlier speaker. All of these produce an enhanced sense of self. It helps you feel that you have something to contribute and that you are capable. And the idea that you have to be good at art to be able to do it, whether it's singing or art, painting or whatever it might be, it's a recent construct. When you think of it, before TV and everything, they were sitting, oh, singing around the pianola um, and no one really worried about how good they were at it. So hopefully that, that um, tide will change and we'll be allowed to express ourselves a bit more because there's so much joy involved. So, in closing, can I encourage you to watch a new ABC TV show? It's a series called Space 22. I think they've just done the very first, let's just switch this over, um, episode, so you could probably find it on iView. Um, it's hosted by Natalie Bathingswaite, and it follows seven strangers, each with their own lived experience of mental ill health, as they take part in an experiment to test if the simple act of participating in art can help, help heal their wounds. So just as there'll be plenty of jobs for psychologists in the years to come, I like to think there'll be plenty of jobs for artists and art educators as well, as we realise more and more just how important the arts are for the health and well-being of individuals and of all of our communities. So please encourage your artists, support your artists. They're doing really good things for all of us.